Let's try this. How Chapo, Sean Penn, and Kate de Castillo exploited themselves and each other in one big clusterfuck of a story. All right, y'all, let's get to it. When El Chapo met Sean Penn, the bungle in the jungle, <laughs> how everybody exploited each other is what I like to call it. Here's, here's what's crazy to me, though. Here's what's crazy to me. Like, I don't, I don't put myself in a position as, as an actor where, like, you become an actor and all of a sudden you want to go speak to world leaders and you want to go speak to giant drug lords and who do you think you are, right? And they'll say that, right? But they'll go do it, like, you know, like Sean Penn, he'll go do it, be all in everybody's business. But if Kanye does it, if LeBron does it, they're like, shut up and play basketball. You know what I'm saying? If uh, if Kanye does it, they're like, shut up, you're crazy. You ain't got no business over there. But these guys, they get to go play journalist and, you know, run around in the jungle with, with, with drug lords. Like, I don't get it. Like, stay in your lane, man. Go make a movie. You're I Am Sam, bro. You're Spicoli. I'm not trying to hear all this. You the, you the man, the, the the foreign relations guy. I'm not trying to hear it. Raul Castro. But look at this guy. This guy want to be with everybody. Interviews President Raul Castro. A communist But if Castro would have got assassinated that day, Sean Penn would have been like, I ain't had nothing to do with it. Wouldn't the, the paparazzi didn't sell the location. He flies to New Orleans and personal pulls people out of the floodwaters. Okay. He brings along cool. two macho accessories, a shotgun, and a personal photographer. Right, 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 right. Who needs the photographer? I mean, this is this is a state of emergency. You know what I'm saying? So what happens if the photographer says, "Listen, there's a state of emergency outside. I can't even, I can't get down the highway to get to you, bro." And then the photographer got to stay behind. Does Sean Penn still go and rescue people out of the floodwaters? I leave that up to you to decide. He's not afraid to go down and, and, and get, get dirty. And, and when he gets dirty, he wants to make sure there's a photographer there with Ketchum while he's dirty. While in hiding, he'd made a new friend, a glamorous pen pal he hopes will make him immortal. So that's what it is. A little on the run loneliness and feeling like, feeling himself like, I, I, you know, I'm the man, right? Like, I, I should be able to reach out to Kate de Castillo, who, who she thinks she is? I mean, she's fine. I love her. I think she's smoking. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy. I should be able to just reach out, say what's up, put her on a yacht somewhere, tie her to a pillar in my villa. Uh, why not? So it took a little lonely night like that for him to reach out, and she took the bait. And somehow, in that... Wild little triangle, this guy showed up. Paul Rodriguez, I didn't know he was a relative of Chapo. If if that's what we're going where we're going with this story that Chapo was trying to holler at old girl and then he you know he started throwing in the whole movie thing, make a movie about my life. Uh, you tell me what hustler or what person, what criminal ever had a movie made about them before their downfall or their death. I don't recall it happening. I don't recall that happening ever. So that was a little delusional. He might as well have just told her, listen, man, I'm trying to, listen, girl, I'll be watching you on La Reina del Sur, and, you know, you know, I feel like those legs go on forever, and I just wanted to holler at you, and, you know, if you didn't know, I'm the man. I could get you whatever type of powders and powers that you want, and, you know what I'm saying, you're just going to have to throw me a little something, something on the back end. He was better off telling her that than telling her, hey, man, we should make a movie about my life. And her actually believing that that was something that she could produce. You've never seen those movies produced while the subject is still active. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. I haven't seen it. You, 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 Yeah, he'd have to produce it himself. He'd have to commandeer a production staff and do it himself in order for that to happen. And she really thought that she was going to get that done. So she's wilding. Chapo told her we'll drink tequila and champagne. I'll take care of everything so you're comfortable. I will take care of you more than I do my own eyes. He was a hopeless romantic too. There's no hope for us. I am so moved to hear that you will take care of me. No one has ever taken care of me. All right, so she was... She was playing the little rebound, just a little bit right there. She didn't go too crazy. But he's he's over here ripping his eyes out for her already, dog. There's no hope. What did Damien say? 
in the DMX, DMX song, Damien. He said, uh, yeah, that was over some dough. I don't know. Could have swore it was over a hoe. It's always, always, always. It's either going to, a woman's either going to build you or break you. But this guy right here, his nose is wide open, hiding out, lonely, watching La Reina del Sul on repeat, and uh, they're having small talk on the phone. Thank you for being such a great person. You are so beautiful in every way. So beautiful in every way. I'm telling you, I feel safe for the first time in my life. Oh, my goodness. So she was playing it back. She was playing it back, little Kate. My mother wants to meet you. I told her about you. Wow, already where we reached the mother stage already? Told her about you. Don't worry, nothing serious. Everything will be great. Don't worry, nothing serious. Everything will be great. The Mexican government apparently... He made a whole family situation out of this. Again, he don't get off scot-free. I, I, I didn't let the twins off on pillow talking and, and showing off or whatever. That was reckless of him. You're the guy. You're the guy. You don't compromise yourself when you're the guy. He compromised himself over some chick he sees on TV. That's what he did. And there was an even bigger complication. Sean Penn got word of the meeting and asked to come along. She's One, to Kate represented a tequila too. brand called Honor, and she was looking for investors. Maybe perhaps she thought that you know there would be some way to get him to invest in this business. With so, <laughs> but don't she understand that that's money laundering? If he invests, if he invests any of his money being... Public enemy number one in her business. She don't realize that that's money laundering. She's taking money from a criminal conspiracy and injecting it into her legitimate brand out loud like this with meetings and champagnes. And like this sounds like a whole lot of stupid shit happening all at the same time. You know what I'm saying? From people that are not supposed to be this stupid now remember the official story is that sean penn flew into the mexican jungle to write an article for rolling stone magazine that's the official story but the official story is she's trying to get a movie made and he's trying to get a movie made and sean's trying to get a movie made and she's trying to get a tequila investor they had a lunch they had a lunch about making a movie rolling stone was just there to foot the to foot the bill look at this guy with his shirt on and then this guy with his face on and conor mcgregor had that shirt on at a press conference you the big boy. What you got this dude to make a movie about you? Tell me whenever, when there was a kingpin that had the movie made about him while he was alive, but was not in prison, was just good, living the life. Ah, he's chilling. And they're making a movie about him while he's still doing what he was doing. I ain't never heard of that. Y'all was delusional. There ain't no way he can play Chapo. That's just so funny to even think. Right, like, I mean, an actor's an actor, and they've done it before. I mean, Tom Cruise was a samurai. Christ's sake, but what do we need him for when there's plenty of other guys that can play top of thoroughly? Look, man, you better run out and write an article for Rolling Stone about this thing so you can be protected under the First Amendment freedom. But if you don't do this and it was just a movie deal, they may be able to nab you for something. Yeah, you aiding and abetting. You, you, they wanted you. If you weren't going to, if you weren't going to be sitting there doing the Rolling Stone interview, they wanted you to be giving the United States government information on where you went and what you saw when you went to see Chapel. That's what they're going to want from you. She's concerned that the Sinaloa cartel wants to punish her for the El Chapo debacle, and she's under investigation by the Mexican government. Te metiste. See all that pillow talk got you in a situation now. All of y'all compromised each other. There is this myth about the, the visit that we made, my colleagues and I, with El Chapo, that it, led, that it was, as the Attorney General of Mexico has quoted, essential to his capture. We had met with him many weeks earlier. On October 2nd. On October 2nd. In a place nowhere near where he was captured. So as far as you know, you had nothing to do, and, and your visit had nothing to do with his uh, recapture? The things, here's the things that we know. We know that the Mexican government, they were clearly very humiliated by the notion that someone found him before they did. Well, nobody found him before they did. We didn't, we're not smarter than the DEA or the Mexican intelligence. We had a contact upon which we were able to facilitate an invitation do you believe that the Mexican government released this in part because they wanted... It looks like his face is going to explode or he's going to eat his face. Do you believe that the Mexican government released this in part because they wanted to see you blamed and to put you at risk? Yes. They wanted to encourage the cartel to put you in their crosshairs. Yes. Are you fearful for your life? No. 
-hmm. first wanted to know why you wanted to do this, why you wanted to go there. I secondly want to know the sense of how you felt about the risk you might be taking and why that risk was worth it. I had only, only that I thought this is somebody up, who, upon whose interview could I begin a conversation about the policy of the war on drugs. That was my s simple idea. You wanted to have a conversation? What? Could I begin a conversation about the policy of the war on drugs? That was my s simple idea. You wanted to have a conversation about the policy of a war on drugs. That's right. That's right. So did it happen? Did you have the conversation? What did you come up with? How did, it, how did this end? Right. We're going to put all our focus, forget about blame. We're going to put all our focus, all our energy, all our billions of dollars on the bad guy. And what happens? You get another death the next day, the same one. Do you make a moral equivalency exactly. between El Chapo and um, people who either buy? What's up, y'all? Is he acting? Is he being genuine? He just trying to save his ass with his acting ability on 60 Minutes. <laughs> I sell drugs in America. I do if it's me. I can't make, I don't make that judgment for everyone else, but I wouldn't go so far as to buy or sell drugs. So he's no better than you and no worse than you. I say, I say, I can't, I can't make him worse than me if I'm not out there doing everything that I can to get a conversation going on the way in which we prosecute that war. You have said to the AP, and I'm asking now, mm -hmm. you have no regrets. I, I, I have a terrible regret. What I, are the regrets? I have a regret that the entire discussion about this article um, ignores its purpose, which was to con try to contribute to this discussion about the uh, policy in the war, war on drugs. Let's go, let's go to the big picture of what we, what we all want. We all want this drug problem to stop. We all want the, the killings in Chicago to stop. We are the consumer. Whether you whether you agree with <coughs> They use Chicago as a, America uses Chicago as a scapegoat. Just like those cops that um damn they win that narco wars video that I got that got copyright struck. Just like them, they be like, Oh, I hate what Chapo did to the south side of Chicago. Did Chapo do that to the south side of Chicago? Or did America do that to the south side of Chicago? Hmm? Is Chicago uh uh um the product of everybody else in the world, or is a Chicago the product of America? Huh? Explain poverty in this country, and then give us reason for every dollar that's spent somewhere else, that's given somewhere else. Explain to me poverty in America, and then explain to me all the money that America ships off somewhere else. So are these poor neighborhoods... Are these criminals that are bred and brought up in poor neighborhoods, are they a product of somebody else or are they a product of America? I'm not trying to hear this shit. You know what I'm saying? Blaming everybody else for Chicago. Blame everybody else for Chicago. America, blame you. Chicago's a product of you. An early one. An early one. So is New York. So is L.A. Whether it's Sean Penn or not, there is a complicity there. And if you are in the moral right... Or on the far left, just as many of your children are doing these drugs. Just as many. And how much time have they spent in the last week since this article come out talking about that? <laughs> one one percent? How much I wanna know the percentage of how much percentage did you talk about it with Chapel when you was on his land having cervezas and, and you know, eating canasada. You know what I'm saying? Like how, how much of the percentage of that conversation did you have with him while you were there? Or were you guys talking about how to get a movie made with Oliver Stone and Kate de Castillo and Chapo and everybody live a nice, happy life together? But I'm still waiting for somebody to show me a time where the film was made before the fall. No, it's impossible. Don't There's not generous. much dialogue about... As My article failed. Chapel. Let me be clear. My article has failed. Article was Charlie, whack. Is We're going to read Penn it. Still in contact with anybody in El Chapo's camp, and does Maybe he not think today. No. the two will ever meet again? 
Uh, no, he'd said he would have wanted to have met with him again, and that was his plan. But no, there, he has not heard from anyone in the cartel or surrounding El Chapo, who has now not, bro. been recaptured back in the same blew prison his cover. <laughs> uh, that he escaped from uh, a year ago, six months ago. So that, that point about him and what he hoped to accomplish uh, is just one small part of a long conversation about how he negotiated with El Chapo, what the deal was. This deal and this trip was led by uh, the actress Kate Del Castillo. She had had some contact with him. He was smitten with her. And Sean contacted her and believes that, you know, that contact. He was smitten with her. You let your smittenness trick you off the street. I can't be smitten enough to blow my cover. That enabled him to go. We know now from some things that have been released from by the Mexican authorities, you know, that there was a very interesting dynamic between the two of them uh, enabled him to go. So uh, watch 60 Minutes and, and you'll see more of a very interesting conversation about the deals he made, why he went, uh, and what he thought of El Chapo. It was a moment that shocked the world. Two-time Oscar winner Sean Penn tracking down and shaking hands with the notorious drug kingpin El Chapo. His ticket in? The glamorous Mexican superstar Kate Del Castillo. Did the fugitive harbor a crush on the actress? ABC's Diane Sawyer sheds new light on the strange and dangerous saga. Sold yourself out. You are looking into the eyes of a mystery. And his, his eyes just penetrate you like a dagger. The drug lord, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. The man himself so dangerous and elusive no prison can hold. Didn't even get to smash. All of that me, I mean, that I know of. Sold himself out over it. Wow. Him. And so the largest manhunt since Osama bin Laden is underway to find him when surveillance pictures show someone is about to get there first. Not the police, it's not Macaulay. the army. Wait a minute, is that the American actor Sean Penn? Sam. And who is the woman with him? Can it be the supernova of Mexican television? Actress Kate Del Castillo. <laughs> Just the fact that she thought she was gonna pull that off, like this all sounds like a story again, a PR story whipped up after the fact. Because she's like, oh, I think it's in this interview. She's like, I, you know, I was never going to accept any money from him to have to do with the movie. But you was going to accept it for that tequila, though, right? And that right there, instant money laundering, if you ask me. But I know, you know, what do I know? Her biggest role, Reina del Sur, Queen of the South. She plays Teresa Mendoza, Teresa. a beautiful and rapacious drug lord. Within three months of these pictures... Chaco's pursuers will move in and nab their man. Didn't you know you were under surveillance? No. To be honest, Diane, I didn't think about it. You thought you were going to get in and out of there. <laughs> didn't you know you were under surveillance? I didn't think about it. Of course not. Everything that was going on, all of the steps that you were taking, all of the counter uh, security um, things that, that those guys were doing or counter, you know, they were watching their own backs and, and, and putting off safety um, precautionary measures and all of this. And you didn't think that they... What, what did you think they were doing that for? They were doing that in case y'all were tailed. So to say you didn't think about it, you wilding. One would know. Yes. So what is the story? How on earth did this whole strange explosive saga begin? One night, she says she was sitting at a computer just free associating about her philosophy of life. And then in computer, right. just free associating we're gonna, about... We're going to judge her real quick, all right? All right, she could have wiped down her island. All right, before she did this, she got all these nasty coffee cup rings. Unless that's the design of the thing, but I think that's nasty coffee cup rings. So we're judging her on About her about philosophy it. of life. She was online talking about her philosophy of life. Sitting at a computer, just free associating about her philosophy of life. And then, in one sentence, she lights a fuse mm. that will create an explosion. Today, right. I believe more in El Chapo. She lights a fuse. So she threw the she threw the hook out there, all right? She threw she tickled them. She threw the tickler out there. Today, I believe more in El Chapo Guzman than in the governments that hide even painful truths. All right. 
Now, people will make these kind of claims and make these kind of quotes and say these kind of things, not realizing that somebody might have got boiled, you know what I'm saying, in the backyard this afternoon or or tied and skinned to a tree. See, they say these type of things without knowing the real truth, you know. She found out the real truth after she got there, everything blew up in her face, and then she had to be worried. So she didn't really know what the hell she was talking about when she said this, but she threw the tickler out there and he bit. Create an explosion. Today, I believe more in El Chapo Guzman than in the government. She urges the drug lord to turn his power for good. You would be the hero of heroes. Let's traffic with love. You know how to. Life is a business. The only thing that changes is a merchandise, right? And Guzman, one day, she kept Wait, it. Wait, what? Guzman than in the government. Create an explosion. Today, I believe more in El Chapo Guzman than in the government. She urges the drug lord to turn his power for good. You would be the hero of heroes. Let's traffic with love. See, that's, that's, uh, yeah, I don't get it. I don't know how many men would think of that. That's, that could be a woman thing, but uh, we need to stop that. <laughs> Out of this reaching out to people in hopes that they'll change. Call me a cynic, man. People don't change, man. You think you're going to hit up the biggest kingpin and, and put out a public record and say, what did she say? Let's traffic in love. Let's traffic with love. And his mentality was, no, how about I keep doing what I'm doing and you just become part of this? How about that? He knocked you off your square quick, took your whole statement and threw it out the window. Love, you know how to. For good. You would be the hero of heroes. Let's traffic with love. You know how to. Like oh, you know what, Kate? You're right. I'm going to traffic with love. I'm going to give up this $7 billion industry right here. And I'm just going to traffic love to you. You know what I'm saying? And then she was going to be like, oh, no, no, I don't want you to traffic love to me. I don't see you like that. And then you was going to end up boiled. You know what I'm saying? So you don't know what you're talking about. This was ridiculous. Come on, let's. I'm going to reach out to the to the. The dude that do the wildest shit, and I'm going to be like, hey, man, you know, we could turn this around. Just give up all that money and traffic and love. There's never been money in love. Love take your money. Love don't make you money. And one day, she gets a call. And they said, no, we are um, Joaquin Guzman Loera's lawyer. Yeah, and we're not going to stop doing what we're doing, but we want you to get involved with us, and maybe we'll push our money and launder it through your tequila. You let us know. You know what I'm saying? Oh, don't bring champagne with you. Ah, pendeja, you brought champagne with you. Like, Felix Reyes said, she's, she's bugging. And I I was in shock. Mm -hmm. I was in shock. And they say, well, uh, Senor Guzman wants you to do a movie uh, about him. He wants to give you the rights of his, of his life. And I was, why me? And why you? Why? And, and, and they say, well, because um, he is a fan of yours. He loved your character in La Reina del Sur. And you tell the truth, you're brave. She says he she's not sure if she'll produce a documentary or a movie, but she tells the lawyers she'll finance it legitimately. Not a penny from him. Not a penny from him. That's, uh, he, I mean, they, they asked me, and so, do we have to put money? Are, are we charging for the... And I'm like, no, not... No. Is there anyone... So, so why are you take your tequila bottle over there? He can't put money into the movie. Why, why is it okay for him to put money into the tequila bottle? Because, I don't know, this just sounds like they went over there for one reason, and now they have to find a way to clean it up, and they're having that conversation on the news. She was about to take that money. So, <laughs> Everybody was about to take that so, destructive, not going to find out who Hitler really was, not going to find out who Pol Pot really was. As, as an actor and, and a filmmaker, I cannot say no. You know, it's a big opportunity to have, for the first time, someone tell him. It's a big opportunity, but has it ever happened before? It would have been the first time, and it didn't happen. So that should tell you why it doesn't happen. Because those two things don't go together, being able to have a successful criminal I don't know, mastermind, uh, criminal at the top level, and then you're going to produce his film while the story's still being told. I've never seen it happen. His story uh, being alive, too, yeah, really was. Hitler really was. Not going to find out who 
Pol Pot really was. As, as an actor and, and a filmmaker, I cannot say no. You know, it's a big opportunity to have, for the first time, someone tell his story uh, being alive. First time. Being the biggest drug lord. She says she's now found two producers to raise money for the Chapo movie project. And they tell her they have another well-known Hollywood friend, the actor Sean Penn. You know, this big Hollywood actor will give me more credibility you know, about that I w I'm serious with this movie. And when they meet, he has an idea. Take the fugitive El Chapo up on his offer for a meeting, and he, Sean Penn, will go with her. So she asks to meet with El Chapo and bring some of her colleagues, and the answer comes back yes, and this time directly from the man himself. I have faith you will be comfortable. I will care for you more than I do for my own eyes. She responds. I am so moved that you say you will take care of me. No one has ever taken care of me. But it's a little seductive. Though. Definitely seductive because if he's if he's talking in the context, you know, the other the the thing that we were watching that they copyrighted me on, that made it seem like these two were just pillow talking him on the run, pillow talking with her. This is more like they're framing it like he's talking to her about the visit. And if he's talking to her about the visit and she's throwing the little eh. You know, I never had nobody take care of me. She's, she's, she's on some, so seductive shit. That line, isn't it? Uh, when your life is in risk, uh, I don't think so. You know, so are you sure that we're gonna be okay? And by being okay means I'm gonna be alive. If she's being pleasant, so is El Chapo. Yeah, as long He's going to have a soft spot for beautiful women. We count 37 text messages to his lawyers. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Which colors are available and we should buy a color for a woman? BBZ 30 is the most modern. No pink, eh, no pink, buy silver. What colors are there? iPhone 6 Plus, Blackberry Lee with uh, iPhone. So he was tricking. He's buying her phones. You got to get her the, the, the newest stuff right here. Got to get her a little care package over here. Ah, come on, guys. Never meet your heroes. They'll let you down every time. Is he seducing you? Or are you seducing him? Who's the cat? Who's the mouse? I Both. I don't think it was necessarily me, Kate del Castillo. He was probably had a crush on Teresa Mendoza. Had a crush? But Wait a minute. Dead. Well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I think he's an ad, ad, maybe an admirer. I don't know. What you mean you don't know? You know. You, you absolutely know. Um, uh, okay, maybe yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to ask him. In the meantime, up in the mountains, the mysterious king of the drug trade has embarked on a kind of cartel party planning. Following instructions, the actors go from their own chartered plane to a small plane sent by El Chapo. It's designed to fly very low on the mountains, evading the radar. Finally, about 10 or 11 o'clock, she says, they arrive at a clearing on the mountain so dark, she doesn't see who is opening her door. And he said, amiga, and that's how I knew it was him, because he called me amiga, and, you know? And I was like, oh my God, I couldn't believe that we were there. I was just, I didn't know how to react. Did he embrace you? Did he kiss you? What did he do? He kissed me on the cheek and embraced me. When Del Castillo moved into light, she looked at the man rarely seen by the outside world. He's actually taller than I thought because <laughs> they call him Chapo for shorty. Seven hours. What did you talk about? He it talked about his mom. He wanted me to meet her. She says his face appears more like a man who wants to give up running. I sense that, uh, that he was probably tired. But he confirms. He is sending an ocean of drugs to the United States and around the world. That dude Did he was say just, I, he looked like a guy that wanted to run. Stop it. You don't know what you're looking at anyway. That's like looking into the eyes of a tiger. You being Kate Del Castillo, looking into the eyes of a tiger and being able to say, I think this tiger wants to change its life. I think this tiger wants to declaw himself and not run his claws through my face. That's what I think of this tiger. You don't know, what do you know? You know how to act, that's it, stick to acting, back up. He looked in his eyes like he wanted to run, but then he turned around and said, oh no, I'm about to blow the world up with some more powder. Like you people wanna see the best in people. You people wanna see that there's hope, right? So it's like you either give us no chance or there's so much hope. But 
Stop. You're looking in the eyes of a tiger telling it not to scratch, not to pounce. Like, that's not how it works. I supply more heroin, methamphetamine, cocaine, and marijuana than anybody else in the world. There it is. He's telling you what he is. Believe him. But he still loves his kids and he still <laughs> loves his mom. So there's Well, of course, that to me is the duality of man. People don't understand that. To me, the duality of man is that a man can take another man's life. A man can be brutal with another man. Uh, a man can be brutal with other people, right? But that same person is going to feel something. If there's one thing that he loves in this world and if that's his mama, something happens to his mama, he's going to feel that. That's the duality of man. I don't understand what squares think about criminals. What do you think? You think because they're criminals, they don't love their mother? Why are y'all surprised when you see criminals love their mother? Why are you so surprised when you see criminals love their kids? You know what I'm saying? Any type of criminal. The worst of the worst. There's, there's a guy out there that does horrible things to people, right? But there's somebody or something that he loves in this world. Mind you, there are some people that have nothing, that have no love, that are just carnage. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, you know, the majority of the criminals or the, the people that do bad things that you, that, you know, you feel like you're so separated from, y'all be like, but he loves his children and he loves his wife. And it, yeah, that's how that works. That's the duality of man. He's able to do both. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't be understanding you people. You, you weird me out with this shit. Leave yourself open, then you look stupid. There's love inside there somewhere. And she notices as he talks. <laughs> yeah. The crime boss displays almost suburban manners. He doesn't even say a bad word. And nobody around. It's like everybody will say the same thing. Like, what is your stereotypical criminal? For you squares, it's something you saw on television. You know, something screaming and gnarling. Arr! Some monster, you know what I mean? No. Go take a look at Congress. You can look from the White House all the way down. There's a, a, a criminal cut from every jib that existed. There's a criminal cut in every shape that exists. It's just, we small in the head as humans, man. We don't see that part. On him smokes or do drugs. And it was like, oh, Sean is the only one who smokes here. Do you have a picture? Yes. Can we see it? Sure. This Jeez. is her picture, the drug lord in blue shoes and the blue designer shirt. As the party rolls on into early morning, the drug lord apparently takes a look at his TV dream girl and notices that this is a woman who may have had one tequila too many. Because he said, I think you have to go to bed. I think the tequila, I was tipsy. And I was like, I said, yes, I think it's time. Tipsy, like dizzy like, tipsy? Yeah, like a, a little bit, you know. Well, you know the tequila just got to you. And he said, I'm coming, I'm, I'm showing you your room where I was going to spend the night. And it was the only time that we were alone. That was really scary. Oh. When we turned around and we were alone. Okay, so far he didn't spend the night. He, he's just walking with her alone to her room. Did he spend the night is the question. Out of anybody's sight, I was waiting for him to make a move or just grab me probably in a different way. You know, man, I had no idea what intentions, you know, in my head, it was every, it could, everything happened in my head. Which and, ones was you down for though? And my partners couldn't do anything. What would you have done if he'd made a move? Oh my God, I, I... He must have thought about it. I, I, don't, I don't know, Diane, I don't know. He did something startling. <laughs> Daniel T said, gulp alone. He simply tried to steady her on her feet. I actually got the guts to tell him, I said, amigo, while we were walking, um, amigo, just don't forget what I said on my tweet originally. You're a powerful man. You can do something good. And he said, that's good, amiga. You have a great heart. Do it. And he said, I'm not staying here. You won't see me tomorrow. I never stay where my guests are for their security. With that, the dangerous drug lord vanishes. Now, here, here she goes, drunk off the tequila, waiting for him to put his hands on her in a different way, walking down this hall, gulp alone. And uh, she still want to play... Um, 
you know, United Nations and say, my friend, you know, I remember what I say, you have good in you and blah, 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 blah. He's like, oh, yeah, you got a good heart. Go to sleep. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Ain't nothing changed around here except now you're part of the team. <laughs> but I'm not staying here tonight for your safety. January 8th, 2016. Before dawn, troops move in on a house in a coastal city and El Chapo is there. And they nab him. The Mexican government said the ability to track her trip was essential to the capture of El Chapo. Though yesterday they told us it was just a contributing element. And don't get it wrong, that could have been part on the government just to, yeah, just to create controversy. Just to make her look bad. Like, hey, you guys want to, you guys want to, um, what's the word? You guys want to glorify this Chapo guy? Cool, glorify him. But guess what? You're going to lay in his infamy as well. So are they trying to get her in trouble with the drug lord? Do members of the cartel think you led to the capture of their leader? I don't think so. And the Mexican attorney general has openly insinuated that Del Castillo may have come close to money laundering. I have not received one cent from the guy. Mr. Penn? Because the deal she fell through. One of her mistakes was being naive about Sean Penn's Rolling Stone article. As of tonight, Del Castillo says it still stings that Penn has been calling himself a journalist, while in the article, she is called our ticket to El Chapo. Mm. He got it right in that way, you know, because he wouldn't be there if it was not for me. Aren't you angry at him? Yes, a little bit. I am. See? But again, I'm... I, Everybody I'm... exploited. Everybody compromised each other. Chapo compromised himself. She compromised herself, Penn compromised himself, but they also compromised each other, all for what they wanted. I'm angry at myself because I believe in people and I didn't know Sean Penn. Tonight, the drug kingpin is sitting in the same Mexican prison where he escaped last year. And there's something that may surprise you. You're still in touch? Yeah, through the, our lawyers. That film project is on. Has he agreed <laughs> to go forward? Still? Yes. It will be your choice, your call. It will be my call and everything will be on, on my control. What did I tell you? This movie wasn't getting into production until he fell. He fell. He agreed to go forward? Still? Yes. He agreed? I believe that when it says that he's an executive producer on it. That's when I believe that. And you're still going to do it, even at this yes. price. Yeah. More than, more than before, you know? Yeah. It's cost me so much in so many ways. Nah, it looks, with all the tears in your eyes, it looks like you under the gun to continue the project and still do it. Look at her face. At no part of this has she been emotional until right now. 